La la la. Hope there's no annoying drones or anything around to ruin my peaceful walk. Okay, I've hidden Chris's drone up in this tree. He'll never find it there. This is the Ruko R111 Remote ID Module, and I have three main objectives for this video. Number one, how much does the extra 14 grams of weight affect flight time on smaller quads such as the Cinehawk Mini and the Babyhawk O3? Number two, what is the range of this module? In other words, how far away can a random person detect my quad? And number three, can I benefit at all by putting this on my drone? Is there a silver lining? Let's find out. Yay, remote ID module. My first flight time test will be with the Cinehawk Mini. It weighs about 215 grams with just the battery. And then with the module, it weighs 229 grams. So let's first start without the module and see how much flight time I get on an 850 milliamp hour battery. I'm gonna fly until I've got 3.5 volts average per cell. I'm not gonna make you sit through all of this. I just want to generally show what kind of flying I'm doing. Not very smooth, but also just pretty tame. Wow, so this is coming up on eight minutes and we're at 3.53. As soon as it goes to 3.49, I'm cutting the throttle. Ooh, we're getting close, we're getting close. As soon as I see 3.49, I'm cutting the throttle. Oh, did I see it? I might have seen it. Okay, there we go, 8.22. Now it's time to do a flight with the module on the drone. All right, so I'm just past five minutes of flight time and we're at 3.63 volts. I don't think I'm gonna make it past seven minutes, but I am willing to be wrong. All right, so I'm just past seven minutes and 30 seconds and I'm at 3.55 volts per cell and waiting for 3.49. As soon as it hits 3.49, I'm going to disarm. I honestly did not think I'd make it past seven minutes. Because my battery was like at 3.7 at like four minutes in. Oh, 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 I'm getting close, I'm getting, oh, there we go. Whoa, was that 821? I think that was 821. I am actually very surprised about that. I'm gonna have to review the footage. So I guess flight time wasn't really affected, which is kind of a good thing. 14 grams though, it's, it's not nothing. I guess what I've learned is that this module is quite lightweight, even though it has everything built in, including an internal battery and a case. I'm actually quite impressed with this package and how light it is. I'm not saying someone else can't do better, but the fact that I got eight minutes of flight time is impressive. I'm going to take this outside and test it on the Babyhawk O3 and fly it a bit more aggressively and see if my flight time is reduced a considerable amount. But before I go, let me just weigh the Babyhawk O3. It is 227 and then with the module, it is 2.42. So I just did a flight without a remote ID module and it was seven minutes, 51 seconds on the Emax Babyhawk O3. Now we've got the remote ID module installed and I'm going to take off right now and see how long this flight will be.
All right, so right now I'm at 3.58 volts, uh, average volts per cell, and my flight time is five minutes and 31 seconds. So I don't know if we have that much battery left, but in my first flight, I started just flying low and slow, as I am right now, when the battery was getting low. Maybe the flight time will be pretty similar in the end. Oh, 3.49, okay. Seven minutes. Now it's 3.53. I wanna disarm when it gets to 3.49 by hovering. There we go. Seven minutes, 27 seconds. So an extra 14 grams on a medium freestyle quad is not gonna affect your flight time too drastically. That's what I've found. Now it's time for a range test. I've got the module attached to the Mavic 3, which of course has built-in remote ID, so it does not need it. But I wanna use it just to track my distance and see what the range is on the R111. All right, starting with 100 feet above me, I can see that the module says pretty much 100 feet, 100.1, so that's accurate. Let me go to a distance of 100 feet away now. And the app seems to agree, 105 feet, okay. I guess my distance was actually closer to 105 feet. All right, now let me go to 400 feet. And yep, we still have it. All right, now how about 500 feet away? Yeah, 498. All right, now I'm about 600 feet away and yeah, the app updated, okay? I'm surprised that Bluetooth has this range. So let's go to 700 feet. Uh, it says 725, but I'm wondering if it's just taking the straight line of sight distance instead of the, just the horizontal distance. Let's go to 800 feet. So it still says 725. Um, let me go back and refresh. I don't know if that does anything. So it still says 725 and it says last seen. It, well, it doesn't, it doesn't give a last seen status. So let me go back to 700 feet. Okay, I'm around 700 feet away and it still doesn't have an updated measurement. Let's go back to 600 feet. I'm at 600 feet and do we have, okay, there we go. Okay, let me go back to 700, so back to 700 feet. It says it's last seen a second ago, but it did not update the distance. Um, let me try refreshing that, going back here. Hmm, I kind of lost it. So it seems like the range is around six to 700 feet, which is pretty impressive for Bluetooth. Okay, just going out for a little walk through the park. La la la, there's no annoying drones or anything around to ruin my peaceful walk. So what I'm going to do is just fly it down this path. Walking along, enjoying the day and land it and Kelly will hide it somewhere where I'm not looking. I will try to use the app and see how accurate the location is and see if I can actually find the drone without using a beeper or anything like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. How come I don't see any audio meter? Check, check, check. So here we go. Kelly's gonna hide it now and I'm not gonna look. Okay, I've hidden Chris's drone up in this tree. He'll never find it there. Unless the remote ID module works the way he thinks it will, but it's way up in the tree. So let's see what happens. Is it well hidden? You'll have to find out. All right, I'm going to look for the module and on the map, let's see, do I have a location? Distance from me, 187 feet. Okay, let's see if that's accurate. There's a map right here. And if I just tap on the, the icon right there, it'll want me to drive there. 
So I'm just gonna cancel that and just start walking in the direction that I think it is. 173 feet. Yep, the distance on the map is getting smaller. 150.9 feet, okay. So I have no idea where this drone is, but I'm getting a little bit closer to it. I think 154.2 feet, no wait. Now it says 200 feet away from me. <laughs> uh, oh great, I don't know if I'm going the right direction. Uh, Ask the squirrel. Squirrel, where did Kelly hide my drone? So there's like a little compass on here and the arrow is going all over the place. So this is kind of confusing, but it seems to have settled down and it's pointing in the direction of the drone now, okay. Now my distance is 137. I feel like I'm actually making progress now. Yep, I am closing in 88.6 feet. Getting closer, I feel like I need to go left. 55 feet away. It's like somewhere around here. I think at this point, I just have to use the beeper on the drone maybe. Cause I am, ah, I just happened to see it. There it is, right there. Well, I guess that sort of works. I would not have found that without this yeah, map, yeah. so. Yay, remote ID module. <laughs> Let's go through the setup process. Here's what you get in the box. The module, the user manual, a USB cable, as well as some zip ties and various methods of attaching the module to your drone. The first step is to charge this with a USB-C cable. Now, don't use a fast charger. It actually says 15 watts or lower. Once that is charged, it will turn green. Then you can download the app, which is called Ruko Scanner. And since I'm in the US, I have to register with the FAA, which I did using the serial number on the side of my unit. That was a very easy process. And again, the manual has very clear step-by-step -step instructions on that process. Now let's get this app open and make sure Bluetooth is turned on. Then turn on the remote ID module by pressing the power button for three seconds. And then press the settings button for three seconds. So now you can see it's rapidly blinking green. Now the app has already found my module and I'll double check that the serial number is correct and it is. So I'll go ahead and connect to that. Next on the setup screen, you'll see registration number, operator ID, aircraft model, all that stuff. If you're in the USA, you actually don't need to enter any of this info. So I'm just gonna enter something and then press save. And then I'll restart the module by holding down the power button and then turning it back on. Right now it's searching for GPS. Indoors it probably won't find it, but the two green lights slowly blinking indicate that it's trying to find satellites. And this is what it looks like once it's got GPS. Now in the app I can go to drones around. You can see the information that is transmitted. Now it's ready to be attached to your drone. Just make sure that if you are flying a GPS quad that you don't cover up the GPS antenna, wherever that might be on your drone. In conclusion, if you are in the market for a remote ID module, this Ruko R111 is definitely one to consider. It's affordable, around 35 US dollars. It's a very convenient form factor. It's an all-in-one package. It has USB-C charging, and the battery life is around five hours. And as you saw from my tests, it is functional, it's lightweight, and the app works pretty well. Sometimes it just seems to be a little bit laggy in terms of the uh, location updating, but as a remote ID module, it does the trick, and as an added bonus, you can find your crashed quad if you really need to. We hope you found this video helpful. Please consider using our affiliate link in the description if you'd like to buy this module. Thanks for watching Ready, Set, Drone. See you next time.